Scientist Lee Kump thinks these waters hold the key to what caused the Permian mass extinction. We think of Green Lake as almost a, a, a living fossil of the Permian Ocean. The upper part of this lake is just like any other beautiful lake in northeastern United States. It has fish, plants, but lurking down below is another environment entirely. This is an oxygen-free environment that's been created because this lake is essentially stagnant. When you dive down into this lake, you find at about 60 feet, everything changes, and lurking down there is this toxic brew that we think was involved in the mass extinction at the end of the Permian period. Diving into this toxic brew isn't without risk. Well, this isn't your standard pleasure dive here. The dive is potentially hazardous, actually. We have to be particularly cautious when we dive here to avoid long exposure to the poisons that exist within this lake. So we've just arrived at 60 feet. This is the depth where the water goes from having oxygen in it to having no oxygen. Where the oxygen levels fade, you encounter a lifeless world where almost nothing survives. You're approaching the danger zone when the water turns pink. This means you're swimming in one of the most toxic poisons on Earth. It's called hydrogen sulfide, and it builds up when water stagnates. You see, the water is pink. That pink is millions and millions of purple bacteria. These bacteria consume hydrogen sulfide. So, so if I were in any doubt that hydrogen sulfide was here in this environment, this confirms it. These pink bacteria are the smoking gun for the cause of the Permian mass extinction. This is not a safe place to linger. Hydrogen sulfide right now, even though I have a full wetsuit on, is absorbing through my skin. So we're just gonna get the heck out of here. In this lake, the hydrogen sulfide is trapped below the surface. But it seems that 250 million years ago, it was a very different story. The hydrogen sulfide escaped from the stagnant oceans and bubbled up into the air. These sulfide-rich waters rose to the surface and degassed into the atmosphere, so the devastation was able to spread from the oceans onto the land. 